Good day everyone, I am Christine May Padawan here to present my favorite macroalgae, the Porphyra species. Porphyra is a genus that belongs to Rhodophyta or the red algae phylum under class Bangiophyceae, order Bangiadales, and its family Bangiaceae. However, recently many species of Porphyra were reclassified to the genus Pyropia due to advancement of algal taxonomy. Porphyra species are usually epilithic, attached by means of numerous thin colorless rhizoidal cells, and it appears on rocky shorelines worldwide. Few species can be found in the tropics and the poles, but its greatest diversity is found in cold temperate and boreal regions. The adult porphyra could grow up to 35 to 75 centimeters long, with rose to purple color when submerged and mottled red to green or brown in intertidal zones. Its thalli could either be single cell thick or monostromatic, or it could be distromatic or two cells thick. Also, the blade cells of some species has only one placid, but others could contain two. Lastly, the blades or the macrothallus of porphyra is the gametophyte generation, and its microthallus, the small and the small branch filamentous conchocellus phase, is the sporophyte generation, which will be further discussed later in the life history portion. Porphyra has nearly 133 species distributed all over the world. Some species under this genus include Porphyra tenera, Porphyra yazoensis, Porphyra umbilicalis, and other economically significant species like Porphyra hyatensis, Porphyra pseudolinearis, Porphyra dentata, and Porphyra angusta. Moving on to the life history of Porphyra species, Porphyra has a heteromorphic life cycle with an alternation between a macroscopic folios gametophytic phase and a filamentous porophyte phase as mentioned earlier. Porphyra reproduces through both sexual and asexual modes. In sexual reproduction, certain mature vegetative cells differentiate into carpogonia and other vegetative cells on the same or a different talus differentiate into colorless spermatangia. After fertilization, the carpogonia will divide to form the zygotospores or the carpospores, which usually germinate unipolarly to produce the filamentous conchocellus phase. The conchocellus phase, which serves as a survival stage, can survive in adverse environmental conditions but will give rise to conchosporangia and conchospores only when the conditions are right. The conscious pores germinate by bipolar modes to give rise to young thalli. For the asexual mode of reproduction, on the other hand, the vegetative cells in some species directly form the spores called archaeospores, which can directly germinate to form the thallus. Now, recent studies found out that besides these two modes of reproduction, porphyra also reproduces by endosporangia or endospores, which ultimately give rise to the thallus. The primary reason why porphyra species are my favorite is because of this. You see, porphyra is also known as nori in Japan, laver in UK, US, and Canada, purple laver in Britain and Ireland, kadengo in New Zealand, kim in Korea, and tsai in China. The distinctive taste of nori is due to the presence of free amino acids, and the taste of salt and sesame oil is when it's already processed. It, it, it is also known to be used for sushi, narimaki, onigiri, kimpap, laver bread from Welch, etc. The food value of porphyra lies primarily in provisions of essential vitamins like A, B, and C, as well as minerals including iodine. It also contains high proportions of digestible protein, but only contributes a relatively low percentage of protein to human diets. Moving on. Porphyra cultivation originated in Tokyo Bay about 300 years ago. Successful large-scale cultivation of porphyra depends on fully understanding its life cycle, its requirements, and development of efficient cultivation process. The cultivation of porphyra occurs in two parts, in their cultivation of seedlings and field cultivation of leafy thalli. The first part is the mass culture of conchicellis by plain type or by hanging type culture. 
Then, seeding conscious pores on cultivation nets are next by dropping a solution comprising of 10% nitric acid, 95% alcohol, and 0.5% chromic acid. Massive conscious pores generally begin to be released during late September or early October when the water temperature decreases to about 23 degrees Celsius. Then layers of cultivation nets are placed in culture tanks with jet pumps for agitation of the water to help non mottle conscious pores attached to the nets. After that, the nets are then ready to be hung on the raft in the cultivation area. In the field cultivation of leafy thalli, the semi-floating raft method or the fixed pillar methods are widely used. Overall, the first harvest occurs after a growth period of about two months and several harvests are done by April or May of the following year. The, high, the harvested porphyra are then processed into commercial end products. Nearly 1 million tons weight of porphyra is annually harvested. Japan alone produces an average of 400,000 tons of porphyra per year. It has been cultivated for the past 100 years in Japan and today it is one of the largest mariculture industry in Japan, Korea, and China. In 2008, Japan, Korea, and China produced 8,980,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,